What's up guys, how's it going? Today I wanna to talk about the DRZ400 subframe. Of all things, man, I never wanted to talk about the subframe, never had any desire to, I didn't plan to make a video basically at any point now or in the future. But here we are, we're gonna talk about it because I had a bit of an accident recently and I, I kinda of messed mine up. I messed a lot of things up. You can see I'm running the Continental TKC 80 on my bike currently. And I was feeling out the whole 50-50 scene, determining whether or not I'm going to run a 50-50 tire or any combination of street and off-road tire, any tire outside of a 100% street tire on this DRZ 400. So I was trying to determine that by running these 50-50s. And um, Man, long story short, I think I'm gonna go back to street tires on these and likely purchase a dedicated dirt setup to swap back and forth between. Spoiler alert, I plan to talk about these tires in the future. However, 50-50 uh, tire, I'm pretty sure you don't get 50% off-road, nor do you get 50% on-road. And that difference there, the, the part that, that we're missing is just sacrificed to the motorcycle gods. I hope they are pleased. But one thing I do know is, I don't feel like you got 100% on your bike anymore. Now maybe those feelings are strong, maybe it's partially due to my current state of mind after having this little incident. It's not the tire's fault, it's totally my fault. So I was in this off-road environment, let's call it, and it was a grassy area, and I combed through the area to ensure that there was nothing in the grass that was going to reach up and snag me. Psych, uh, there was something in the grass. And I caught it, I think it was a piece of concrete, like a culvert or something like that, and I. It took a chunk out of my back wheel, which is fantastic, <laughs> and it slammed me on the right side. I hit my head very hard. I don't really recall uh, much of the incident. Anyway, in addition to that chunk out of the wheel, the incident bent my exhaust pipe, bent my subframe, sheared the steering stop off of the low, lower triple clamp, so now the bars go all the way. They struck the gas tank, and thankfully, silver lining, I'm running this oversized Acherby's plastic fuel tank, and it can take a proper beating like a true dirt bike should be able to do. Now, had I still had that steel gas tank from the factory on the bike when this occurred, it would probably be in an interesting shape at this point. But uh, luckily, I didn't have it on there. Uh, not that it really matters, but um, I feel fortunate. You know, I got to beat up the plastic tank, and, you know, that's what it's for. So we're gonna, we're gonna address the other issues in the future. My biggest concern right now is the subframe and this bent exhaust pipe. So the subframe that is on the S and the SM models are basically just the E model subframe, which is from here down. You can see where the end of that E model frame would be right here. So from here down, it's identical to the E model. But Suzuki retrofitted this hoop onto the end to attach the legally required hardware to make it street legal, the tail light and turn signals. So it's just like a retrofit. So this, this hoop is, there's these like tabs that were welded on. You can see all the welding that was done. And then this hoop was welded onto that. It's, it's pretty cheesy, to be honest. It works, but okay. So. The issue is aluminum is very soft, it's ductile and all those things. It's not a great structural metal. And then, okay, so the original E model subframe is right here. So if you applied an input, a mechanical input out here somewhere, it would just hit the fender. It wouldn't, you know, apply any force directly to the subframe. So if you were to whack it down here, you know, it's much shorter, therefore stronger. But if you whack it out here, you can end up applying a significant amount more force than you would ordinarily to this subframe which makes it more susceptible to bending. In addition to that, this, this hoop on the end is what gives you the ability to run a rear rack and other accessories, bags and other stuff, whatever you're, you know, whatever you're running. Whatever you're running, it's likely going to hang out wider than the subframe itself. That is case in point, my rear rack, which may, may not have helped me much in this incident. So that rear, rear rack hangs out wider than the subframe, which, you know, when you go down, will make it more likely to apply some sort of mechanical input to the tail of this bike, striking the ground or other objects. And so, again, it's way out here on the end. 
you know, you can inadvertently put quite a bit of, of um, force on the subframe. Again, all of that makes it more susceptible to bending. It's just, it's just kind of vulnerable, really. So, like I said, aluminum is soft. We all know that. You can bend these back. A lot of people do it. A lot of people have good success doing it. That's going to take some dicking around with it. I don't have a whole lot of time to do that. So I, I just bought one. I'm going to swap it out, see if this fixes it now. This is an eBay part. Allegedly, it's off of a 2020. Allegedly, it is straight. We shall see. Again, an eBay part. So <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. We'll see. I've had very good luck. So I've, I've crashed basically every bike I've owned. So I've had a, a couple of street bikes, a handful of dirt bikes, you know, over the course of 20 years. I've, anyway, I've crashed all of them. I've had them all down multiple times, most of them. And I've bent subframes before. So I've purchased subframes before. Uh, actually, my first motorbike I bought with a bent subframe, a 2001 Gixxer 600, my first street bike. Gosh, it's been a while ago. Time flies. So I've done this before. I've bought these subframes, and generally when somebody says they're straight, they're straight. That's just been my experience. Fingers crossed that this is also the case. So, like I said, we'll, we'll address the other issues in future videos. Actually, this exhaust pipe is something I've been wanting to change forever. I have an RS2 sitting for this bike. I've been meaning to put it on. Life has been so crazy. But this gives me the opportunity and it kind of forces me to do it. So this will be the very next video that I put out it will be the RS2, the comparison. Um, but for now, we're going to swap the subframe. Then we'll address other issues in the future and including those tires. We got to talk about that. All right, let's swap the subframe. So this is the majority of the issue that I have with this bent subframe and bent exhaust for that matter. It's pretty obvious that the it's pretty obvious that the exhaust pipe is contacting the tire. And not only that, I, is this light helping? I don't even know. Anyway, the um, the tire is also contacting the bottom of the subframe here just below the muffler mount. I don't know if you can see the rubber that's been deposited down here. So not only is the exhaust contacting the subframe, I'm sorry, not only is the exhaust contacting the tire, but the subframe is as well. And that is why I have to address this issue. And we can see, if we take a quick look over here, that it's not by a small margin. It is not by a small margin that it is contacting the tire. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a clear line that's been that's been made on the tire where, there, where that interference is occurring. And so I took this other subframe and I measured it from. I want to put that. Up. I measured it in between here. So, in between those two years, and it measured about 100 and, uh, well, 169 and change millimeters wide. So, we're going to round that up to 170. And this tire is a, uh, like I said, a Continental TKC 80. It's a 140 80 R17. And this thing measures, uh, what was it, one, 149 and change, like 149.8. These are millimeters, by the way. So 150 wide, essentially. So take the 170 width of the subframe minus the 150 width of this tire, and you're left with 20 millimeters, or essentially one centimeter on each side of the tire worth of clearance whenever your suspension is fully compressed with, with this particular tire. So what I'm saying is it would take one centimeter of inward bend to contact the tire, given everything is straight from the factory, which there are tolerances. It's likely not perfect. But not only that, but it's contacting this tire somewhat significantly inward. So I don't know. It might be, what, 10, 15, 
20 millimeters off. I don't really know. I, I can't really quantify this right here. But I'd say maybe 15 millimeters. Anyway, I was just showing you that just so it's like, yes, this thing is definitely bent. So the first thing we're going to do is take this rear rack off. I know this isn't a standard feature on a DRZ400. A lot of you have racks. Uh, that sounds kind of funny. But a lot of you have racks. I know I have a rack. I like playing with my rack. I've handled my rack a lot. I know you guys handle your racks. So actually, I really enjoy this rack. It is the Precision Rack. Or Rack by Precision. I don't, I don't really know. So this rack just has four millimeter, uh, four millimeter hex uh, button head fastener with uh, 10 millimeter lock nuts on the bottom. So very simple back here. So those are nice and loose. Uh, the side is just five millimeter hex, uh, hex key. Whereas, uh, you know, on the stock motorbike, this would be an eight millimeter bolt. Not, not really a big deal. But uh, I do really like this precision rack. So that gets the precision motorbike rack off of the back. Obviously now the seat just slides off. And now we can address the number plates, which are obviously just the standard 8mm bolt here and one on the other side as well. And this panel has that little, uh, little catch here up on the front. There is a rubber grommet. Little catch on the fender there too, if you can see that. But this um, it slides forward like that. Got that little grommet there with the uh, little hook on the front. Not a big deal. So that back panel won't come off unless you've got this filter cover off which these are just quarter turn Zeus fasteners. Really nice that Suzuki put these in here. Boom, just like that. Comes right off. So six millimeter hex on the back. And a 12 millimeter bolt on this side. Now the exhaust won't come off. There's another fastener down here. So that big thing comes out from the back side. All right, so this one is also a six millimeter. I don't know if this wrench is big enough to get that off there. Well, she's gonna be, look at that. All right, so it looks like. All right. 
just that fastener. And this tailpipe at this point should slide right off. That was a weird noise. Oh, wow. Goodness. That explains it. All right. I really did bend that thing, didn't I? My goodness. Well, I guess we can see that we've crash tested the MRDE. I don't know how well the Yoshimura holds up to that, but we have definitely crash tested this one. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and pull the battery while we're at it here. Like I said, not a big deal. These are, these are cake. All right. Got one up here too. Not a big deal. side of the bike and I'm not gonna lie I have no idea what this piece even does I guess it fits I guess it fits into the side plate the number plate there uh, I'm not sure why it's there but it's got to come off and it looks like there's only three fasteners they're all 10 millimeter Ooh, that one holds the starter relay all right I have no 
idea. All right, now there's two more of these plastic ties that are holding on the wires that run underneath underneath the subframe here, going to the starter relay. Really. I've just been placing those back on the wires that they came off of, just to keep track of them. So there's that one there. There's this one up here. It might be hard to see. Here, I can move the camera. It might still be hard to see. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> Go. Okay. Now, at this point, I think we can start tackling this back fender. And it should come right off. I, I think it's only at this point, hold on, with these bolts in here. Here, I'm gonna twist you sideways a bit. But this guy here. And here, I think it's the only thing holding the spinner on. And then we have these bolts here that are holding their thread into the bottom of the air box. So those have to come off as well. But those are just little eight millimeters, 10 millimeters here. Not a problem at all. Tell light wiring. All right. Runs through this opening. All right. This will be a trick. it up high enough. Sorry, it felt like I was breaking it, like I was going to push the plastic too far. But yeah, this little clip here, gotta lift up on it. I could finally look in there and see after a second, but there it is. All right, so once that's done, we can snake that wiring back through this fender. There we go. snake the wiring through and get this fender placed to, to the side here move on with our lives continue the project all right so obviously I'm gonna have to cut my zip ties here to get the wiring off so this is part of the process that's definitely not identical between motorbikes. Since this is an off, off, or off, I keep, I keep wanting to say off-road. This is an aftermarket part. This is the DRC Edge 2 taillight. And so, yeah, your mileage may vary here, obviously, because you, you may or may not have an aftermarket light. You may or may not have this one. You know, yours may be slightly different, so... I do, I really love this light. It's, and now I sprang for the clear one because it, uh, the circuit board in the back is white. It kind of matches the bike. And I, I, of, I often like clear lenses just because the lights are brighter than going through a smoked lens. I guess in my 
to my older, uh, I'm in my, I'm 31 now. Yeah, I guess I, uh, I kind of opt for safety, perhaps a little more than I used to. So the brighter I can get things, the, oh, I did drop, they have a spacer, all right. Yeah, the brighter I can get my signals and lights, the, the happier I typically am. You know, it's not, uh, it's not the safest thing to ride motorbikes, so. You know, I try to do my best. Now, this is the, uh, like I said, it's the DRC Edge 2 tail light. And it's actually, uh, I got the, oh my gosh, what is it? Uh, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock labs integrated turn signal inside here. So I, I really, really dig this light. It's, it's bright. Now the turn signals are a little bit difficult to see. I mean, look, it's like a four inch wide light you, and you're gonna put two turn signals, a left and a right turn signal inside there. So the signals aren't great, but they do sequence and things like that. It's really cool. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled with the purchase. The only thing I do hate about it is it is, it's, it's, it's pricey. Especially when you get the integrated signals. The DRC Edge 2 by itself without integrated signals is actually pretty fair in price. But yeah, that circuit board, it's, um, eh, it gets a little bit, gets a little bit butt puckering, man, honestly. But it's worth it. To me, it's a, it's a very nice upgrade. It keeps things from hanging off the side of your bike. I, I love it, so I'm not, I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm not broken up about it. I'd buy it again. All right, at this point, we're gonna remove the passenger foot pegs. These are 12 millimeter sockets. And I don't know if I have enough wrench here. 12 millimeter sockets or 12 millimeter fasteners. Ooh, yeah. that actually hold it to the frame of the bike off. So these look like 12s, we'll, we'll see here. There's a flange on this bolt on the right side of the bike with Loctite. But the bolt on the bottom left side is not a flange head. Hmm. All right, so now we're gonna have to take care of this bolt up here. Kind of goes through the backbone of the bike. And it's just a long, a long bolt about that long with a nut on the end. Just a flange head nut, no washer. And I believe they're both, yeah, they're both gonna be 12 millimeter. point I think this thing is ready to come off I think so like I said I'm just kind of going as I uh, 
going along here and just kind of taking care of things as they come up. So it looks like I am definitely held on. Oh, 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 oh. I already know. I remember seeing this and I haven't taken care of it yet. So there are two fasteners. So there are these two little eight millimeter fasteners up here. I totally forgot about these. They're just holding the air box to the, the subframe here at the bottom. All right. All right, at this point, we should be ready to pull this thing off. Yes, sir. subframes side by side and there's one observation that I've definitely made I don't know if, I feel like I can see some extra bend this is my old one it just in this uh, this section right here now maybe I'm crazy and I likely am and that's okay but one thing I definitely do notice and it's very evident is this guy right here oops this guy right here so where these two pieces of tubing come together and are welded. You can definitely see that, that gap there. And I don't know if that was there prior to me crashing or not. But it's definitely not there on this other subframe that I've purchased. And I'm just, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking out loud here, so take this for what it's worth. But this may be something you can look at whenever you're purchasing one of these DRZ400s. You know, to kind of get an idea of if this thing's been down or not. Now, this may have already been like that. Like I said, I'm just thinking out loud. So. Yep, there it is. All right, you know the drill. We just have to assemble in reverse order, so I will not waste your time putting this back together. We're going to speed it up. That's all there is to it. It's really, it's a simple job and it's a quick job. Actually the hardest part, <laughs> believe it or not, was getting this rubber piece. This guy right here. So that rubber piece hangs out right here in the subframe and my new one didn't have that. I don't know why it was taken out, but uh, didn't have it in there. So I had to remove the original from my, my original subframe. And you know, you know how that goes. It's, it's, um, well, it's rubber on dry metal and okay. So basically you just have to use a bunch of WD-40 or something, just lithium grease, spray grease, something to make it slippery enough to pop out with a screwdriver. So not a big deal at all. But like I said, this is a real simple, a really simple project. So, and look, uh, try to line you up here. It looks like I have achieved the desired result. It looks straight again. So that's what we wanted. Now I will say, get some gasoline here. Clearly the exhaust pipe is bent. You know, I didn't fix that because like I said, I'm swapping this out to the RS2 and that's gonna be a future video, uh, hopefully coming out next week, hopefully. So in order to, I would like to see if this is clearing, if the, if the exhaust pipe is clearing the subframe. So I will go ahead and uh, I'll just take a little, whoa, that was too much. A little gasoline on a rag. 
should be able to clear this rubber right off. Yes, sir. So we'll see if it's clearing or not. In case you're curious, as I said at the beginning of the video, gosh, this is like almost too much light. I took a chunk out of my wheel so you can see that. Like I said, it's not, it's not terrible. Like the wheel isn't bent, but man, that sucks. And I also inadvertently removed the steering stop. So you can see that's right there. It's just totally gone. It's it's actually, it didn't quite knock it completely off. So I had the chunk hanging on there and I just wiggled it off the rest of the way with my fingers because I was gonna lose it if I didn't. And that chunk is in my in my garage somewhere. This job, not a bad job, easy enough. I hope this video helped someone and thanks for coming along for the ride. I'll see you in the next video.